All right, so we've got this so far. If I turn off my, my guiding layer on top and I turn off my background layer, I've got this weird shape. So it's not quite all coming together yet. various reasons. So I want to decide where do I want to work? Well, let's just get the big shapes knocked out. And I might even um, take some shortcuts here. So I'll turn off my guiding layer, use the move tool, and make sure that at the top the options for the tool auto select for layer is checked. And that allows me to click on any layer and automatically make changes to it. And another trick that can be helpful is if I go to my reference image in my folder and I just double click on my reference image and open it up in preview. And I can shrink that and put it off to the right because I'm right handed. This is often what I would do with kind of painting reference. See, that will show me kind of what the colors are doing and what new things I need to add. And these colors are obviously all of this kind of bright. So I can change the colors. And I can do that pretty quickly with the Move tool because I have Auto Select turned on. <coughs> Just double click, pick the color. Okay, now. I want to fill out the rest of this silhouette. We'll talk a lot about how important silhouettes are in our next couple assignments. And then I can use command left bracket move it down through the, the layers. Command T. Distorts a great way with hard edge shapes to put the their corners exactly where you want them. And then I can duplicate that and do the next finger underneath. Now we're not going for exact here, but to get more accurate, just zoom in with Command Plus, scroll over. If your scroll button in your mouse isn't working, you can just hold down the space bar at any time in Photoshop, click and drag, and that will scroll around your image. Having that, that move tool, I'm mostly just staying on the move tool when I'm not making a new shape. Allows me to select these, these cutouts really easily and then transform them very quickly. And do you think I should care about fingernails yet? No, I don't think I should care about fingernails yet. So we're talking about the big silhouette shapes, not little details. So I can understand getting a little obsessed with this. And it's an exercise, so we're not trying to go for absolute perfection. People don't pay you to learn the tools, they pay you to use the tools. <laughs> so we're in the learning phase right now. Try something a little different with this. Oh, 
and warp it, curve off to this edge, curve to here. And move it down. If ever you make an excess shape you don't want, just hit delete. And we'll take care of the layer. And it might be my favorite thing to just warp a rectangle tool because then it has built into it already some sharp edges that you can manipulate and play with. And you can always duplicate it and use multiples. I'm trying to just get this silhouette filled in. Make a duplicate, Command J, use the Move tool. Whoop. The Move tool will always pick the layer that's on the top. But if you're in a transform mode, it will stay with that layer even if you're on the move tool. <coughs> and then one more duplicate of that, one more transform of that. There we go, to get that arm. Might even be able to make this into the thumb. Let's see. <coughs> Duplicate it again. So in Disney animation, there's this rule you learn at CalArts and in Disney animation books and from their, their old animation school in Burbank, that everything should be made out of bean, bean shapes, <laughs> shapes that are slightly asymmetrical, and it gives a lot more life to, to the work. And so what I'm finding by doing Sean Galloway's here is that everything is made out of these kind of dented rectangles. He has certain shapes he uses over and over it again. And that can be useful. So my goal is to finish up this silhouette. And what makes his work so engaging as a character designer is his silhouettes are really, really engaging and interesting. Lots of sharps with curves, lots of kind of intricate negative shapes. So he's a good one to practice all of this with. And then every once in a while, he's got to go back to simple shapes. I transform and fit in. Now I give you this assignment to get introduced to shape tools, but this assignment, this is kind of a modification of something I got as a graphic design student, where we were required to recreate a historical composition 
and I, I was, we were assigned them. I was given a Winslow Homer watercolor painting of a man in a boat. But we were only allowed to use type tools. So we had to use different letter forms from different typefaces that we found. And this isn't that different because type tools, type design is just a really specific shape and vector tool design. So you can do the same thing by using letters from the alphabet. Now I'm not playing with color a whole lot because this character design doesn't play with color a whole lot. But I'll get to mess with the colors soon. And I'm going for something simple. Really want to stress that simplicity is okay when you're dealing with shape tools and vectors. You just want it to be powerful and well done. There's nothing wrong with simplicity. Duplicate that, transform it, it will show me the shape. Let's see if I can use this for the head. Okay, so that, that face there is really complicated, and it would take a lot of individual shapes to get that profile. So instead, I'm going to show you another tool that's sometimes useful, and that is what's called the Custom Shape Tool. Now, the Custom Shape Tool, just like when you put in sides for polygons, you have a lot of options for it. They're all kind of clip art options. My favorite is this one, which looks like kind of a a pillowy star, right? And so you use that tool and you can get all kinds of cool custom shapes when you warp because it's got so many anchor points going at different directions. So I can kind of warp in his profile a little bit using that custom shape tool. And then you have the rounded rectangle tool where you can actually set how rounded the corners are in the vector, but it can be helpful when you don't just need a sharp point, but you need something that's pretty linear, like I need for his hairline here. And then he's, he's going to need it for his hair as well push this back because I can see that from my reference. It's got all these hair shapes I'm not doing yet. I'm using the move tool. Ah. <laughs> using the move tool instead of having the shape tool create lots of new ones. I can edit any tool that's not working well. be more helpful. So we're getting a lot of practice with these. And then I can move it behind certain other layers. Okay, now I've got this foot I've got to deal with. And we're almost there to a silhouette. First, I'm going to make the, the shape a little too big for the foot with distort, and then I'm going to go to warp, and I'm going to kind of push the dough into the shapes I want. 